with the sent her back chant. The president was clear that he disagreed with it. No, well, but, he, was but, clear, he was clear after the fact. But, he let, excuse me, he let it go on for 13 seconds and it was only when the chant diminished that he started talking again. Right, he, but, and he said nothing there, and he said nothing in his tweet, I'm, 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 I promise I'm gonna give you, but he said nothing there or in his tweet after the rally that indicated any concern about the chant. Right, but I, wanna, but I wanna get to the core issue. The president was clear that he said he disagreed with that tweet, but the core issue is that all the people in that audience and millions of patriotic Americans all across this country are tired of being beat up, condescended to, looked down upon, talked down to by members of Congress on the left in Washington, D.C., and their allies in many quarters of the media. And perhaps most shocking of all were the comments made by Representative Ocasio-Cortez saying that our border agents are running concentration camps, and therefore they are Nazis, and therefore everyone in that audience and you and me and everyone who supports our border patrol are by extension Nazi sympathizers. We, we support Nazis if we support border agents. Let's, and I have one more point on that that I have to say. Okay, go which ahead. Is that I'm a Jew, as a Jew, as an American Jew. I am profoundly outraged by the comments from Ocasio-Cortez. It is a historical smear. It is a sinful comment. It minimizes the death of six million of my Jewish brothers and sisters. It minimizes their suffering. And it paints every patriotic okay. law enforcement officer as a war criminal. And those are the comments, Chris, that we need to be focusing on. All right, the president says that the four congresswomen hate America. Here he is. I can tell you this. You can't talk that way about our country. Not when I'm the president. But during his 2016 campaign, and even as president, Mr. Trump has been as critical of this country as anything the squad has ever said. Take a look. I think President Obama has been the most ignorant president in our history. Nobody respects us. They're laughing at us. We don't know what we're doing. Rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape of our nation. You get a lot of killers. What, well, you think our country's so innocent? You think our country's so innocent? Why is what those congressmen said, and, and you pointed out some things, and I'm not gonna defend everything that the squad has said. There are a lot of things they've said that I think are just wrong and, and very deeply troubling. But why is what those congresswomen have said in general any worse than what you just heard Donald Trump say? President Obama is ignorant. This country uh, is killers, on and on. It's a great question. So I want to drill down on it because it's really the heart of the debate that we're having in this country right now. Anybody who's running for office, right, left, or center, always points out where they think America can do better, where they think America needs to go. But there's a fundamental distinction between people who think that we need to lean into and strengthen America's core values, whether it be our constitutional values, the rule of law, the, the principles of Western civilization, or people who think that we basically need to turn America into Venezuela. For wait, example... Wait, 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 wait. wait. First, first, wait. Yeah, this, a, but the the a point is, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. You, you, the fact of the matter is that people can have a legitimate difference of opinion about policies, whether we want to go one way, we want to go another. Under the Constitution that you so believe in, and I believe in, the First Amendment allows everybody to say it. People We're not talking about constitutional rights. The president said that President Obama has been the most ignorant president in our history. When asked about Putin, he said, there are a lot of killers. You think our country is so innocent? That isn't, you know, his view. That's being sharply critical of the United States, as critical as the four members of the Congress, of the squad have been. Right. What I'm saying is there's a, there's a canyon-sized difference between saying that we need to have better enforcement of our immigration laws to protect U.S. citizens, that we need to have better trade deals to end the deindustrialization. That isn't what I'm, I'm no, talking no, about. Yes, it is, because what That's you're what talking, the president about. ran a campaign that could be summarized in two words, America first. There's a huge difference between America first and an ideology that runs down America. If you want to sum you up, don't think that you don't think the you, president ran down, lock her up. Amer the president America is, is first not American. Is about He's a, the, the court. I mean, look, I completely. Nobody has any problem right. with what the president's policies have been. It's when he goes into r stoking racial fears. Right. I've but, never called. I've never called any of his tweets racist. But there's no question that he is stoking racial divisions. Chris, the core element of the president's philosophy is America first. 
saying that America needs to improve to get closer to an America first ideal as the president did as a candidate, criticizing Obama, criticizing our trade deals, our foreign policy deals, our immigration policies, is, uh, is out of love for America. Saying as Representative well, Ocasio-Cortez did, that illegal immigrants are in effect more American than Americans is fundamentally an okay, anti-American statement. Let me just cut to the heart of the issue. These four congresswomen detest America as it exists, as it is currently constructed. They want to tear down the structure of our country. They want it to be a socialist, open borders country. If you, as Donald Trump says, want to destroy America with open borders, you cannot say you love your country. If you attack border agents the way that Ocasio-Cortez has, it means you have a deep-seated hatred of the nation as it exists. That's why you want to erase its borders, fundamentally transform the country, and in the process, it doesn't matter if American citizens lose their jobs, lose their homes, lose their livelihoods, lose their health coverage, and lose their very lives. There's a gigantic, enormous distinction between Donald Trump saying, I'm going to get on the world stage and put America first in every single thing we do, versus the view that says America should never come first and American citizens should never come first, which is their view, and that's what we're going to take to the ballot box. This is Trump's hardline senior advisor, Stephen Miller, wheeling off an absolute onslaught of falsehoods with Fox News's Chris Wallace. Off the bat, he suggests that Trump was clear that he disagreed with the racist chant at his North Carolina rally, despite Trump saying this, the day after he supposedly disavowed it. You know what I'm unhappy with? I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman can hate our country. Most people in North Carolina, that stadium was packed. It was a record crowd, and I could have filled it 10 times, as you know. Those are incredible people. Those are incredible patriots. The chant sent her home. Is so that you know what's racist to me? When somebody goes out and says the horrible things about our country, the people of our country, I think to me, that's a disgrace. And we should never forget it. We're dealing with people that hate our country. Yup, nothing quite says disavowing racism like doubling down on the racism, which is probably why Miller quickly diverted attention instead to what he claims is the root of the problem. And he points to who else but minority congresswomen for being the root cause of all this racism, obviously. He slams AOC for even likening the detainment camps on the southern border to concentration camps. And aside from migrants sleeping on concrete floors, not being allowed to shower, not having toothpaste and soap, and literally dying, there's totally, definitely no similarities whatsoever. But it wasn't until the end of the interview that Miller loses it completely, claiming this. If you attack border agents the way that Ocasio-Cortez has, it means you have a deep-seated hatred of the nation as it exists. That's why you want to erase its borders, fundamentally transform the country, and in the process, it doesn't matter if American citizens lose their jobs, lose their homes, lose their livelihoods, lose their health coverage, and lose their very lives. Yes, not giving blind deference to CBP, an agency rife with abuse, an agency that has overseen the deaths of numerous migrants in their own facilities, an agency in which 10,000 members are part of a Facebook group that shares racist and sexist memes, an agency against which migrant children have alleged sexual assault from their own agents means you hate America. So Miller can say that not approving of CBP means you somehow support open borders, which by the way, no Democrats nor anyone in the squad do, but this is just the unhinged ravings of a very desperate Stephen Miller backed into a corner while trying to defend the indefensible. He even goes so far as to say this. I'm a Jew, as a Jew, as an American Jew, I am profoundly outraged by the comments from Ocasio-Cortez. It is a historical smear. It is a sinful comment. It minimizes the death of six million of my Jewish brothers and sisters. It minimizes their suffering. And it paints every patriotic okay. law enforcement officer as a war criminal. And those are the comments, Chris, that we need to be focusing on. Here's the thing. I'm a Jew too, and I am less offended by semantics of any kind than I am by people being held in cages, than children being ripped away from their parents, than human beings denied their basic humanity. I'm less offended by verbal comparisons to the Holocaust than I am by literal comparisons to the Holocaust. And while the right has taken it upon themselves to speak for the Jewish people in this country, the fact is that 71% of Jews voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump in 2016, and 78% of Jews supported Democrats in 2018 midterms. Jews are the single biggest voting bloc in the United States to support Democrats right now. So for Republicans, the vast majority of whom are Christian, to proclaim themselves the spokespeople for Jews is comically misguided. 
Here's some basic advice. If you want the support of a people whose ancestors were the victims of one of the worst tragedies in the history of the world, don't support something dangerously similar and think you can ever ever speak for them. As for why any and all dissent from Republicans is patriotic, but not when it comes to Democrats, or more specifically the squad, Miller claims that when everyone else does it, they're leaning into America's values, namely our constitutional values and the rule of law, which is rich coming from an administration that just committed 10 instances of obstruction of justice, and as recently as this month, considered disregarding a Supreme Court ruling to add the citizenship question to the census. Rarely do you see such commitment to the Constitution and the rule of law. He goes on to suggest that it's not unpatriotic to be critical of America when it's in pursuit of Trump's America First agenda, that it's simply out of love for America. But when it's anyone else, like, say, AOC, who would dare to suggest that Americans deserve health care, well, that's not Trump's agenda, so that's unpatriotic. I mean, honestly, do these people hear themselves? He's effectively saying that anything Trump does is patriotic, but anything that anyone else does, if it's not in support of Trump, is unpatriotic. What kind of seven-year-old's logic is that? That everything our side says is good and everything your side says is bad because it's not on our side. That is the kind of stuff that would get a kid ostracized on the playground and cause him to grow up with some really dangerous neo-fascist view. Oh. So Stephen Miller can try and defend Trump's overt racism, but trotting out the architect of the most inherently racist policies in this administration is not quite going to give Trump the effect he was hoping for. 